A Storm Called Katrina, written by Myron Muehlberg, illustrated by Colin Bootman. A Storm Called Katrina Hurricane's coming, baby, Mama said. I'm not a baby anymore, Mama. I turned ten last month. Doesn't matter how old you are, Louis Daniel. You'll always be my baby, she said. Hush now and go to bed. The wind rattled my window something fierce. When the storm howled louder, I covered my ears and hid under the blanket. I ch hugged my brass cornet close to my chest. I always feel better having it nearby. Someday I want to play just like Louis Daniel Armstrong, the greatest horn player ever. In the morning, I saw that the storm had blown away our big oak tree with the tire swing. Mama's elephant ear plants were beaten flat to the ground. Will you look at that rain, Daddy said. Those drops were bigger than quarters. The wind slammed them sideways against the window. Daddy pulled me away from the glass. The whole house shook. Don't you worry now, Mama said. After some huffing and puffing, Katrina will blow away and land up the coast, just like all those other hurricanes. But I couldn't stop worrying. Finally, the rain stopped, and everything got real quiet. Daddy opened the door. Water's rising fast, he said. We've got to get out of here. Let me run and get a few things first, Mama said. Daddy shook his head. There's no time. It's already up to our front stoop. I grabbed my horn from the coffee table. No way was I going to leave it behind. Outside, the whole world had turned upside down. Our whole block was filling up with water. Levees broke, a man behind us shouted. Everybody head south. I held on to Mama and my horn as tight as I could. The water rose so high that we had trouble walking. Daddy grabbed a piece of someone's porch that was floating by and lifted me up onto it. I was glad because I was afraid we might run into a gator. I kept a sharp watch just in case. Mama climbed up beside me and held me in her arms. Everything's going to be fine, baby, she said. I almost didn't mind her calling me baby just then. As Daddy pushed us along, all kinds of things drifted by, even somebody's plastic Christmas tree. I saw a sad-looking dog standing on a bunch of boards. He had a red ball in his mouth. Daddy, I said, can we take him with us? No, Louis, he said. The dog wagged his tail like he wanted to play. He never stopped looking at me as we floated past. I sure felt sorry for that dog. He was in the same fix we were. The water was up to Daddy's chest by now. The sky was so blue and bright it hurt my eyes. Daddy pushed that big old piece of porch up one street and down the next. I tried to help by paddling with a broom that I pulled out of the water. A float boat floated by. Got any room for us? Daddy called to the driver. Sorry, the man said. We're full. Please, mister, I said. There's a black and white dog back there. Can you take him? He's not very big. The man didn't answer. The boat just drifted away. The murky brown water rose so high, Daddy had to climb up on the porch boat with Mama and me. That was when my broom hit a pile of clothes. Mama covered my eyes. Don't look, baby, she said. But I couldn't help looking. We rode and paddled until we reached a place where the water wasn't as deep. Daddy jumped off and began to push us again. Finally, we felt the bottom of our boat scrape the ground. Mama and I got off, too. Where do we go now, I asked. I don't know, baby, Mama said. We joined a long line of folks heading toward the Superdome. Everyone said we'd be safe there. When we got closer, I could see that a, the storm had torn away part of the dome's big white roof. People were shouting and crowding towards the gates. A lady dragging a garbage bag full of stuff came up to us. I've lived around these parts for 50 years, she said, and I ain't never seen nothing like this. She hoisted the heavy bag over her shoulder. I just didn't reckon the storm would ever get this bad. Mama shook her head. Nobody did. The Superdome was a lot bigger inside than it looked on TV. Sunlight streamed through holes in the roof. Thousands of people were spread all over the place. The air was hot and stinky. Mama, Daddy, and me searched until we found an empty row of seats, then sat down to wait. 
I was tired and hungry and wished we could go home. I kept thinking about that little black and white dog. I wondered if he was all right. When the electricity went out, Mama, Daddy, and me huddled close together in the dark. I was scared, but I finally fell asleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up from a bad dream about losing my cornet. I felt better when I saw that it was still tucked next to Mama, but I couldn't get back to sleep. Babies were crying and people were talking. Some folks were yelling at each other. The next day, it got even hotter. People had to wait in long lines for the bathrooms. When we finally got in, it smelled so bad I had to hold my breath. On the way back to our seats, we heard someone say that food and water were running out. Daddy thought he'd better try to find us something to eat, and maybe some more water. Lewis, he said, keep an eye on your mama. I'll be back as soon as I can. Daddy didn't come back all that afternoon. Two men in front of us started fighting over a water bottle. The first man saw me watching them. Hey, boy, he said, eyeing the bottle in my hand. Give me that. Leave my son alone, Mama said. She stood up and hustled us right out of our seats. Come on, she said. We're going to sit somewhere else. But what about Daddy, I asked, grabbing my cornet. He won't be able to find us. Yes, he will, baby, Mama said. Don't you worry. We waited in our new seats, then waited some more. My legs hurt from sitting so long. Mama seemed tired and worried. I looked all around that huge dome. There are too many people crowded in this place, I thought. Daddy will never find us now. I picked up my cornet and fingered the shiny buttons. That's when I had an idea. Mama, I said, jumping up, I'll be right back. No, baby, you stay right here. But Mama, I know how to find Daddy. She looked at me hard. All right, but you come straight back. We're in section 145, row 23. Can you remember that? I nodded and took off down the stairs. I hurried across the fake green grass and stopped right in the middle of the field. I closed my eyes, lifted my horn, and played a song my granddaddy had taught me, Home Sweet Home. After I blew the last note, I stood there for a minute. A voice cut through all the noise in the Superdome. Lewis! Lewis Daniel! Daddy! He ran all the way down the steps from the top of the Superdome. He grabbed me up in his arms and swung me around and around. I've looked all over this place, Daddy said. I thought I'd never find you. Where's your mama? Section 145, I answered. Row 23. When we got back, Mama started to cry, but she was smiling at the same time. I'm so proud of you, Louis Daniel, she said. The buses are here, someone yelled. People pushed and shoved, trying to reach the doors. When we finally stepped outside, it was so bright that I had to blink a few times before I could see. And there was that black and white dog wagging his tail at me. Daddy, look, I cried. Please, please, can we keep him? Lewis, we can't take a dog with us, he said. The buses are for people. Who says we're going on any bus, Mama said. Daddy looked at her for a long minute. Then he smiled. Come on, boy, I said. We're going home.